Hello fellow artists, John Hendrick here with uh, a drawing activity to prepare us for a longer still life drawing. Um, for my students, as you recall, uh, we did a bunch of drawings regarding massing and combining uh, simple forms together to create more complex ones. Then I had all of you look over different types of composition and create your own. Um, here's my example here. As you see, I have a, a planter, which is kind of made up of these different forms like spears to create this creature. I have this statue here. Um, I have this cup over here. Each are made up of different um, different simple forms combined together. Uh, today what I want to show you guys is just a, a great way to loosen you up and to get you ready for the longer drawing. Uh, we'll be doing four different practices today um, and they are continuous, opposite hand, blind, and then just your basic sketching. I'm going to go through each one individually. So, without further ado, here we go. Alright, so before we begin, I'm going to break down my page into four different sections for this drawing. And this is going to be a practice drawing, right, for our still life. And the four practices I'm going to go over today are continuous, opposite hand, blind, and then your basic sketching with massing. Let's begin. So for continuous, and again, I'm using a still life photograph that I have. I also have the objects in front of me as well. And what you want to do is you can start pretty much anywhere on the page. And the challenge for continuous is to look at the object, but not pick up your pencil at all. So the challenge becomes where do I go from here, right? So if you start in a spot, how do you get to the next spot without lifting up your pencil? Are you gonna draw through your object? Are you gonna retrace lines of your object to get to other spots, right? And that is what I'm doing here. Right? So I kind of draw around him, draw it over here, and I'll start adding the different sections of this planter here. Bring it around. You know, if I want to add the uh, paw prints, how am I going to do that? And again, as a practice, I'm not going crazy with the detail, but honestly, the more detail you add, the more interesting this thing might look. All right, so here we go. So where am I going from here? Well, the next shape is going to come right out of there. I'm going to bring it around. Sort of kind of helps you see how things are put together and also keeps your lines loose almost gestural which will translate to an interesting drawing for your final still life so i have this now i'm coming right into the cup Okay, now that we've finished our continuous line drawing, it's time to do the opposite hand. So what this means is whatever your dominant hand is, you wanna switch hands and try the other hand. The challenge here becomes, since it's not your normal way of drawing, you have to focus, you have to look at the object, you have to feel it out, and you have to make some choices as you go. Uh, I know some people will almost do continuous line because they find it harder to lift their pencil off the page. Let's just try your best. It's not gonna look perfect, nor should it. It's really just an experiment, and again, a way to loosen up your drawing style here. For the sake of time, I'm gonna speed up this portion of the video to get to the next one. So sit back, just watch as I struggle and feel out drawing with my opposite hand.
Okay. The third one we're going to do is called blind contour drawing. And what blind means is this. It means that you don't look at the paper at all. You really focus on looking at the object itself, but not at your paper. Um, the challenge here is that you really have to feel out where uh, your objects are. Um, it's good to look sloppy. It's good to look messy. Um, and sometimes that's the fun of it. When you move your pencil away and you can't get to the right spot again, it's going to look like a weird, strange drawing. But again, it's just an exercise to loosen you up. Um, I myself am just going to look right at the objects and not at the paper, and I'll start now. So again, I'm adding the feet here. I think this is sort of where they are. All right, I'm going to bring the head around. Again, this is something that if you want to combine continuous lines, you can. Sometimes it's sort of helpful to not uh, to not lift your pencil up when you're not allowed to look down at all. I'm going to add the box for it. I think it's like over here, sort of. For the sake of this video, I'm going to speed this section up. So sit back and enjoy whatever this turns out to be. Okay, we have one more drawing, and this one will probably take the longest. So we did the first three and we loosened up, and now it's time to take everything we've learned, plus everything we've learned in previous lessons, and combine them together. So, for my last drawing, which will probably take the longest, you want to look at your objects and break them down to those simpler forms. And you're gonna sketch right on top. We're not adding shading yet, this is again practice. So, I'll start with the sphere, and another sphere for my planter. I'll add the ears, which are sort of like cones. All right, throw the eyes in there too. So I'll add this, bring this around. Planter, I'll just kind of put a couple of droplets here. All right, here's my cube that it's on. Details now you can. For the sake of this video, I'm going to speed up this part. So watch as I combine these different forms together to create this complex still life. Well, there you have it. Four basic drawing activities that you can do to prepare for a longer drawing. It's meant to loosen you up. It's meant to make you smile. It's meant to kind of figure out some lines and, and shapes and forms that you want to use within your drawing. And it's meant to be fun. So I'd like you guys to try this on your own. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Happy drawing. And this is John Hendrick signing off. We'll edit that out. All right, and there you go.